we see, uh, you know, probably, you know, maybe two or three patients a day with, with kidney stones. Not that we operate on all of those, but, uh, you know, and if you multiply that times all the urologists in Fresno, you, you see there's a lot of stones. With today's treatments, we would do lithotripsy. Lithotripsy breaks the stone up from outside the body with uh, acoustic sound waves, which will then pass down the tube that leads from the kidney to the bladder and then pass out. So we don't usually have to go into the kidney to remove stones such as this one. Now there are some times when we have to go in uh, through the side with a, um, like a, uh, nephroscope that goes into the body and then we can use ultrasound to break it up through that little scope. A lot of times we go through the bladder with a ureteroscope and we go up inside the ureter and break the stone up with a laser or some other energy sh sources to break the stone up. So practically always we do it with some sort of minimally invasive type of uh, procedure. There have been studies that have shown that if a stone is going to pass, that it most likely is going to pass within two weeks. And after two weeks, then the, the likelihood goes down and then intervention could be considered for the smaller stones. This is a one centimeter stone, so this would not pass down the ureter. Uh, stones that are up to about five millimeters or about less than half of that size have a fairly good chance of passing and stones like this would not, and then there's an intermediate group in between five and 10 millimeters that would uh, possibly pass and would require intervention by the urologist. It's a problem because we don't want to have any x-ray exposure. So we can't do this type of test. We don't usually do the CT, uh, although there is a newer form of a low-dose CT that sometimes can be utilized. Generally, we rely on ultrasound. Ultrasound will show stones, but not nearly as well. It will show obstruction, but uh, pregnant women have uh, some degree of obstruction anyway, so it is fairly imprecise. Sometimes we will do just one film and an ultrasound to try to determine you know, what is going on. We do it uh, in our... Um, in our surgery center, we do it with an anesthetic, so they don't, have, you know, they don't feel anything. It can be done with a local anesthetic, and it can be done with sedation, and uh, the machines are, fairly, are really designed so that you can do it without anesthesia and with minimal discomfort, but it, there's more discomfort than we like to put the patients through, so we do put them to sleep. The pain is very severe, so this does require generally narcotic type medications such as morphine um, or, you know, uh, uh, like Tylenol with codeine or Vicodin or drugs like that that the patient can take orally. Problem is a lot of them have nausea and vomiting, so they can't keep the pain medicine down, so uh, sometimes we have to give them medicine for the nausea as well. Uh, a lot of times it's uh, the initial pain episode is the worst because the patient doesn't always know what's wrong with them. So there's a lot of anxiety uh, associated with the pain. Once they know what it is and that they're either going to have a procedure or that it's going to pass spontaneously, they can get by with less pain medicine than the initial episode. We used to think that, that we always put people on you know, low calcium diets and, and we don't think that's important anymore, basically, uh, because the body has calcium regulating mechanisms uh, that work pretty well. So you don't have to totally restrict uh, the uh, calcium. We do know that stones like to form in the presence of sodium, so we do like people to cut down on the salt. And also, to some degree, cutting down on red meat. Citrate is also very good for the cal most of the calcium stones, and that's uh, uh, something that you find in lemons, lemonade, limeade, those, those drinks are particularly important. And then, of course, just uh, increasing the fluid volume to make more urine because that flushes out little stones that might be forming before they ever become a real stone. Uh, some of the studies have shown one thing and some have shown the other, so I don't think it's conclusively shown that, it, that it's bad. 
You know, for example, iced tea is high in oxalates, so maybe you shouldn't have a lot of oxalates in your diet. But on the other hand, you're getting a lot of fluid, so you're getting one thing that's good and one thing that's bad. So oxalate's another uh, dietary thing to pro probably not to, to cut down on. And that's like in seeds and nuts and things like that. There are some people that are like compulsively eating seeds and nuts and things like that that could raise their oxalate levels. We're going to show you the, the uh, lithotripsy machine. This is a um, Stortz lithotripsy unit has a fluoroscopy unit here, and the shock head is underneath here. The patient's going to lie on this table with their head up that way and their feet down this way. This little plastic device here has water that's put in it, and the patient has some ultrasound gel on their back, and they lie on this thing, and that couples this to their back. And that enables the shock waves, which come through the bottom, to go through this interface of water and gel and then through the body, which is mostly water. And when it strikes the kidney stone, then the stone fragments into little pieces. The, this is highly focused by using the C-arm fluoroscopy in two different directions. And this focuses all that those shock wave energy to a small area in the stone. And that's why it doesn't hurt anything else in the body. It doesn't hurt the bones, it doesn't hurt the soft tissues, and it does, doesn't hurt the kidney. It just fractures the stone, and the stone fragments then have to pass out. Patients put to sleep, or they can be done with a, with a, a local anesthetic. And um, the anesthesiologist would be sitting up at that end, and um, we have a technician that would be operating the, the fluoroscopy and, and the machine itself. And then we're monitoring it on, on, the, um, on those little uh, areas over there where we can actually see the stone. We can actually watch the stone being fragmented. There is a little bit of x-ray exposure involved with, uh, with the fluoroscopy, uh, but uh, not a great deal. And uh, so it's a very safe procedure. <laughs>